Cast on my, my career path changed. I got a broadcasting and television degree, then I got out of school and, and started freelancing as a photographer because that's what I wanted to do. And um, but years later, it took me a while to figure out how I wanted to tell the story that that my parents and my grandparents never spoke about. So my big pie in the eye idea was to take these sort of you know, photographs, these iconic images of the incarceration, and find the people in those pictures because. When you look at those books, or if you go to the National Archives, you see these photos in the National Archives. There's no names of who are in the photographs. They have a number, or maybe a location. This was in San Francisco, this was in Tampran, but you don't know anything about who was in the photograph and how a presidential order, 9066, really changed the course of their lives, and my lives, and my grandkids' lives, and everybody's lives. So in 2003, my pilot sky idea was to find everybody in these photographs. And it took me seven years just to find 12 people. Um, I would go to the Buddhist temple, you know, when they had the, the summer festival, and I put this poster board of these iconic images in my business card and said, hey, do you recognize any contact me? The first time I did it was at the Sacramento, Sacramento Buddhist temple. And there's some Sacramento people in the photographs and I got not one, nobody called me. I'm like, oh man. So I talked to somebody else in the community. He said, go to the Japanese Methodist Church. They have a lunch for all the elders. I go, okay. So I took this board there and somebody, oh, I know who that is. And that's how I got my start. So I'd go to churches in different places and ask people just to recognize the people in the photographs. And it's taken a long time. But what's the most important thing is everybody I talked to who let me into their lives and, the, and let me helped share their story, it, it filled in the gaps for me. And I think, it, and for the subjects and the kids like my age, they wanted to know what their parents talked about. So I shared the, whatever interview I had with their parents, they wanted to know their family history too, that their parents had talked about. So it was really, I wanted to create a body of work that would, that could go for you know generations. So everybody, so nobody would forget because they were, Everybody said here that they want nobody to forget that this had happened. They didn't want it to happen to anybody else. And I think that was the most important thing that everybody had said to me. They didn't want it to happen to anybody else. And I was really lucky when, I mean, when it started, there was no internet, no Google, no way to search any on the internet. And uh, I was so happy when I found one person, I'd call him on the phone and say, hey, I'm Paul, I'm a photographer. I'd like to photograph you. And they're like, why? <laughs> I go, well, you're in this historical photograph, and I'd like to know your story, and, and eventually I was able to go, they let me in their house, and I explained, I'm trying to, you're the only ones who could explain this history to anybody else, and eventually, you know, I got one person, the next person, and then I got a body of work, we were able to show this at the Tamperan, um, in 2012, there was a, um, uh, Asian Pacific History Month for BART, and I published the first story with maybe 10 or 12 pictures, and this gentleman here in the Bay Area contacted me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing a temporary exhibit at the BART station? I said, sure. So we did that, and that's ended up being a permanent exhibit. It's been there since 2012, and that was a catalyst for this group coming together to come named the uh, Tanfran Assembly Center Memorial Committee, and they created a nonprofit, so they helped apply for grants and I was able to find more people and create an exhibit. And they also created a memorial plaza there. It's in Tampa right now. It's like over a million dollar project. It took them a lot of years to get that done, but it's finally done. I'm not sure if anybody's been there, but it's got everybody's name who's been in Tampa Land. There's a beautiful plaza there. There's cherry trees. It's a really, and before in that whole shopping center, there's this little plaque here in the parking lot that you can barely even find. So you gotta remember, everybody in the, mostly everybody in the Bay Area came through Tanfran before they went to the music. A lot of time, you know, Tampa, um, to Topaz out in Utah. So for me, it was uh, more important that their voices were told. So you can see there's a QR code so you could actually listen to the person speak in their own voice. And over there is um, Yuki Uwellen. The, that was like one of the first person outside of my family that I I was able to photograph and find. Um, and then last year with this grant, 
I went to Topaz for the first time. So over there is some color work, some new work that I photographed. And that chair is a chair that my grandfather had made out of the scrap lumber from the camps. And so I was able to take that chair, talk to the, um, Jane Beckwith who runs the Topaz Museum, and she took me out to the exact spot where my grandparents and my dad and my aunt lived there in, the, in Topaz, and I photographed the chair there at, at that location. And I did some other little still lights around Topaz. And this, that's the first time I've been there. I've been to Manzanar, I've been to Tulu Lake, but I've never been to that camp. And um, I still want to do some more work with that, since a lot of my subjects are 80s and 90s, or they've already passed away, and, and a lot of my subjects have already passed away. I have over 61 people I photographed, and there's five more. There's six ones of traveling exhibit that I've had since 2012. It's been the Japanese American National Museum. I had one piece in the Smithsonian a few years ago, and there's a Japanese exhibit there. And, I, and I, so I'm just trying to get this exhibit in more places, especially like in civil rights museums, like in the South and, and stuff. And, uh, and in 2028, I'm going to have an exhibit of all places in Florida. As there's a Japanese um, more common museum in gardens, and so they're going to um, have the exhibit there in 2028. And you would think, middle of Florida? And so I went there last year, gave a little talk. There's this beautiful museum and garden there. You wouldn't believe it. And then it was, it was in the same property where there was an Air Force base, that Army, Army Air, Air Base back in World War II. And then, which was really weird, is that my dad, after he got out of camp, he was a kid, and then he joined the Army Air Force. And that's where one of the bases where he was stationed at. It was in Delray, Florida. But they created this cool museum. This Jap there was a Japanese colony. You know, like um, in the Central Valley here, there was a Japanese colony out in Livingston. And so all the, it was kind of like a co-op. Well, they had the same thing in Florida. And so the remnants of that, there was one guy that still survived, and then his property had to be moved for an Air Force base. And then later on, he had bought other property. And when he passed away, he donated to the city to create this park, which had to have some Japanese influences that had created this museum. That's really, so if you guys are ever down there, you would never believe that it's there. There's maybe a handful of Japanese Americans who live in Florida. <laughs> but it's really incredible. So if you guys get a chance to do that. But I'm really proud that um, everybody really shared their lives with me and opened up. I mean, because when I would call them on the phone, I said, I'm not a salesman, please don't hang up. I mean, I, I, mean, I like to tell your story and then they will, a picture, most of the time people don't like their pictures taken. And, um, but I was convinced them to let me take their photograph. And I said, well, let's take five minutes, right? I go, no, take probably like an hour, an hour and a half. Because I'm using a big format camera, four by five camera, shoot black and white. Because I wanted the pictures to look like the pictures from the 1940s. And then, then I said, also, I'd like to interview you and talk to you. And so that was a whole nother barrier pass through. But you know, eventually, once we got started talking and they had some old, maybe they, maybe they might have some old photographs, it's, um, I don't know, it's maybe, that's the right word, they were, they were happy to talk about it. Because I'm not somebody in the family, even though I'm Japanese American, but they were able to open up to me. And then I was able to, to understand what happened to them and, and their family, you know, the struggles they made and all the triumphs they, they made. And my exhibit, the traveling exhibit, it's called Gambate, because I, I think it's that Japanese word of never giving up. And I, I think they never gave up, even our grandparents. When they came here from Japan, the first time they faced all sorts of racial prejudice, you know, they couldn't become citizens, couldn't own property, and they overcome so much. To, to where I am, you know, I grew up with this all American you know, life, you know, after the war, they never talked about it, so I never knew about it. I think they kind of wanted to shelter me from that, whatever happened to them, so I wouldn't have any kind of prejudice about anything. So, anyways. I hope um, their stories resonate with everybody and and hope it will go off. So when anybody's researching this, maybe later on, they would read their stories and hopefully this will happen to somebody else, another deaf group. So thank you for listening to me and coming to the exhibit. And I really like this, this exhibit. I mean, I'm photography, I'm a documentary photographer, but there's like these really cool art 
for me, it's like library doesn't think like these other artists do, but I really like the concept of all these five different pieces. They all really work well together. I think it's so cool. <laughs>